All right, we got a return guest today, Mr. Guide Josh Stewart over here. Today, he's gonna lead us into the 10 essentials. And I think he's about to blow your mind and my mind with this type of stuff. He's Look at this stuff. He's got all of his gear laid out right here. All, if everybody's watching on video, he's got it all out. So I'm super stoked to have Josh back on talk about some guide wisdom and make us all be a little bit safer in the mountains. Right, Josh? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, the, what are, what do you, what would you call the 10 essentials, Chad? What, what are, what are the 10 essentials? Oh, oh, he's putting me on the spot. I'm man. putting you on the, yeah. This is might, the reverse I, scenario might to, here. I might have to edit this one out. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> I would say what, what comes to my mind is things like, you know, having a map, compass, headlamp, things like that would be like a 10 essentials. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure it are like the big three kind of a part of the 10 essentials where it's like tent, sleeping bag, that type of stuff. Or is it more of like something that, or is it more kind of around safety? I guess sometimes I get a little bit confused with what it actually is. Uh, it's just a bare minimum of what you need to bring when you go, when you go outside. Um, I don't, I've never heard of the term like the big three, but if there were a big three, it's probably like food, water, and your cell phone. I mean, that's kind of, if you were to go on a, on a trail run, you know, you'd probably have at least those things. Got you. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was thinking big three, as in like big three backpacking, like if you're going backpacking, like you need like a sleeping bag tent and then your sleeping pad or something like that, or, mm -hmm. or your backpack, right? That's kind of the big three to me, but you're talking about like, if you're just going out on even just like a day hike, these are the 10 yep. essentials you should have on like any day hike, any trail run or anything and then obviously a backpacking trip but this is like even for things that are like you know an hour even two hours totally things i okay. mean we're, we're basically just talking about the, the the essentials for human survival it's not yeah. just about the backcountry you know if you you need food water and shelter that's what you need for human survival so those are kind of if that's that's your big three right there food water and shelter Perfect. Perfect. Well, we got three down. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have seven exactly. to go. No, I'm just kidding. No. So we, we actually, uh, we're, well, whoops, I got a timer set here. We, we felt as though we went a little bit overboard with our, our last. Hour. So we're going to, we're going to rein it in with this one. We, we told Josh says he's got about four and a half minutes for essential. So we're going to, we're going to try to give it to you guys as brief as we can, but also as give you as much as much value as we can. So you can take it away, Josh, on this one. I've, I've been practicing my, my speed talking right before this, you know, yeah, yeah, right. like, an, like an infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the 10 essentials have evolved over the years. Uh, I just want to make a like note on that. Like if you were to just Google 10 essentials, one of the top hits is going to be REI's interpretation of those. And they've got two published on their website. They have the classic 10 essentials, and then they have what they're calling the 10 essential systems, which is what I tend to use. Um, so just real quick, we'll just run through the classic list just to give everybody a familiarity with what they are. So the first one is navigation. So that's gonna be like your map and compass, then a headlamp, sun protection, first aid, a knife, fire, shelter, extra food, extra water, extra clothes. So those are the 10. And then how that is evolved is really what we're going to get into in this first, in this next part. We're going to go over every category. So navigation is that that's stayed the same. Um, and that's uh, the first one. So that's just going to be, you know, your map, your map and compass. And what's really important about this is that you have the skills to use them because using a compass is not as simple as it sounds like, at its most basic level, you just need to figure out which direction you're heading. And you can like, if you know there's a highway south of wherever you're lost, you can just like head south. And um, so that it can sometimes be as simple as that. But you, if you need to get somewhere specific, like you know where your car is parked on along this trailhead, then you've got to be able to be able to take an accurate bearing. And then in order to do that, you got to know how to use your compass. You need to know how to set the declination properly. You need to know precisely where you are and um and all the nuances of using a map and compass and so it takes some training so don't just throw a compass in your in your backpack and call it good um, you need to know how to use it and on that note your compass has got to be reliable so it can't be like the compass that's sitting like in you know in the top of your water bottle or the compass that goes in your keychain and gets banged around all the time um because if it gets if it gets damaged or if there's like a bubble in it it can affect the, the accuracy and you just can't rely on it so make sure you know how to use it and make sure that compass is reliable 
I actually store my compass in its own little pouch just to keep it protected because it's getting tossed around in a backpack and stuff because I got a real rely on that. Dude, great, so. great tip mm -hmm. on that. What's funny is every – okay, if you watch any any kind of like hiking – or something like that, they're always like, make sure you have your map and compass. and all. How many people do you actually think the percentage is that people actually carry a map and compass? Of the average hiker that's up yeah. there, very, very few. And yeah. now – I've gone down the rabbit hole of declination and all of that. And you're right. It can be kind of, you know, cause mm -hmm. every, every depending, you know, if you're in Montana versus if you're in Wisconsin, that's a different declination, right? Yep. It's different mm -hmm. because of the, of the magnetic, whatever. If you were to just give someone, if you were just to transfer your knowledge to someone and it had to be like one or two basic things of how to use the compass for like survival, what would that mm -hmm. be? What would that look like? What would that be? for them to understand or know? Figure out how to uh, take a bearing and transfer that bearing from your compass to your map and then figure out how to take a bearing on your map and transfer that from the map to real life. If you can wow. do those things, and but when you we can take a bearing in real life and you transfer that to your map, you're triangulating. So you take three bearings and you draw lines on the map to triangulate where you are. And what happens when you do that is you take it off of three different points. Like say you're doing a, uh, a bearing off of three different mountains, for instance, um, you would draw the lines and they would all intersect at one point and they would create a triangle. And the idea is that you are in that triangle. Map. And so then you know where you are and then you can use that to figure out how to get yourself out of wherever. Dude, at. I love it. I love it. Yep. So, that's and, that, and that's something that somebody that if you, you know, everybody's just like, I'm going to throw a compass in my bag and call it good. And then if they actually lose their cell phone or something happens, yep. they have no idea what they're going to do. They're going to look at Northeast, <clears throat> Southwest and be like, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. At, at a minimum, you know, it's good to know, have a good familiarity where, where you are, you know? I'm driving to this location and I'm going to hike generally north of wherever I'm going. Then if you get lost, you can just hike south. It's good to know like where the closest highway is or where the closest trailhead is, at least in a general direction. Um, because if you have a good general sense of direction, you can kind of, you know, like I, I could go get lost in the Mount Baker wilderness and I know generally which way is south and which way is north because I can see the sun. I know where that is. Um, I know generally where I am. I know that Baker is going to be to, to the north of where I am. Um, so if you have a good general sense of direction of where you are, then that can help you supplement the accuracy of your compass. But if you're going to a place you're not familiar with, um, it's, it's a lot different. Awesome. So. awesome. so super, super clutch. Have a compass. Know how to do it. Shoot some bearings. Great. Yep, absolutely. And then not only that, but like, everyone's getting comfortable with their phone. I think it's worth noting that that should be in the navigation category. We're throwing our phone in there. And there's there's three most common apps that most people are using, and they're uh, Gaia, uh, CalTopo, and then Onyx. Those are the, the three apps. And they're they're so good, like that's my go-to. That's what I'm gonna use. Uh, but you can't, you don't wanna rely on that. You wanna bring them up a compass. Perfect. And, and I think it's really good to note Although we're, we're spending a little more time, you know, but this is, these are all great points. But like you said, having a general direction of where you're at and like even just like re remembering things that you pass as you went in, there's yep. often things that I will do too, right? It's like trying to figure out where that is. And then especially when you're rock climbing and stuff like that, like when we're on Sahali and like if you don't like making sure you download the route or being familiar with the route, especially when it starts to get technical – like on your either having it on your phone, like the route on the GPX or like having pictures and things like that. I don't know if this really fits in with the with the compass and stuff, but like having that stuff on there prior to you going is going to help you not go off route. And then all of a sudden you're in some technical terrain where you're now you're screwed. You can't down, mm -hmm. you can't go up. And, you know, so just something worth noting. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, that that is totally part of the navigation category is having some route topos of the rock climbing route you're doing, or having some actual photographs of which way to take to get around this this you know rock outcrop and to get to the summit. And those those details and those descriptions are totally part of the navigation category and are so, a lot great, harder. Great point. Yeah, and it's it's hard. It's like you look at it on the 
on the picture and you're like, okay, cool. And then you get out there and you're like, oh, everything looks mm-hmm. the same. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. All right. What, what's next? Cool. So I'll pull out my, my trusty navigation card here. This I, it seems a good idea to have in there. And you just throw that in your kit that way um, as you take things out and, uh, and use them, you can remember to put them, them back in your kit. Mm-hmm. Um, generally for the 10 essentials, I like kind of like the grab and go idea. Cause then I don't need to go through everything all the time um, unless I take something out of it, but I can just like grab my bag. It's already pre-packed and ready to go. Mm. And uh, when I'm, when I'm mountaineering, I like to have kind of like a grab and go kit. That is the bare minimum. It's super ultra light stuff. And I can fit every single 10 essential. Like you can see this whole table, right? There's no way you can fit all this table into, into a bag, right? It's going to take up a good portion of your backpack. Um, but that's because I've got like my primary use stuff out here. Like, you know, I got a down jacket, right? That's my insulation. And that's like the heaviest version, the biggest, bulkiest version. But I also got like an emergency blanket Mm -hmm. and that's also insulation, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like the bare minimum. So if I'm going on a trail run, I'll probably take the bare minimum. But if I'm going to go on something where I know I'm going to need more insulation and I'm going to bring like a jacket and that counts as my insulation. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes I'll bring that really ultralight kit and then I'll bring something to supplement it. And the ultralight kit is just like a backup in case somebody else that I'm with, you know, forgot a headlamp or they left their sunglasses in the car. And then, then at the very least we have an emergency backup in the kit. So I've got my sunglasses. Sure. I've got myself covered, but it's be good to have a backup. So it's important to kind of cover your partner's butt too, because you guys are kind of working together and if they lose something or if something happens to them, it, that almost, that's also affecting you as well. It sounds like. Mm-hmm. Particularly if you have a trip that is uh, very long, right. Um, and particularly when you're mountaineering, you know, when you're mountaineering, you forget sunglasses that that ends the trip, you know, that's a big deal because you can't go on the glacier without sunglasses. You'll, you'll go blind. It's a, it's a important. So things like that for, for longer trips and for mountaineering trips are particularly important to have a backup. So, mm-hmm. all right. So illumination. So that's going to be like, uh, it's going to be like a headlamp, you know, that's going to be, or a flashlight at a minimum, like I'm going on a trail one. I might bring, I might just bring a flashlight because it's lighter and smaller and I'm probably not going to need it, but I want to have a backup just in case. And then extra batteries. Um, for extra batteries, I like to use lithium batteries rather than just regular ones. And that's because they give you full power all the way up to the point where it's dead. Whereas like a regular alkaline battery is going to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it eventually dies. And f- as it's getting dimmer, it's just useless light because it's so dim. So I want full power. And then when it's done, it's done. And I have to swap out some new batteries. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, when I usually bring a couple of headlamps I bring one like primary headlamp and the backup headlamp when I go mountaineering, um, my primary headlamp, I don't use uh, replaceable batteries. You just use like rechargeable lit- built in lithium battery. And, uh, and that way I'm not just burning a bunch of batteries every time I go on a climb, I'm just recharging this thing every time I go. And then the reason I have one that uses regular batteries is because if I go on like uh, a longer trip, I may not have an opportunity to recharge that rechargeable battery. So I want to have some spare ones that I can just throw in. Mm-hmm. Some headlamps have um, have a hybrid where they can use that rechargeable battery, but then they can also, you can swap in some uh, replaceable ones as well. Awesome. So yeah, that's my illumination. Um, Real quick on that illumination too. Mm-hmm. remember when we did the crevasse training, when we were coming out of there, we, we met this random family that was in the middle of like between snow Lake and the parking lot, but still probably a couple miles away. Total pitch black was just using their cell phone as a light to try to get out of there. And they had a baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if their phone's down and nobody else is on that trail, how are they getting out? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that like, I don't think the average person thinks, but then I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm susceptible to this as well. We were unable to complete one of the summits we wanted to do on this long trail run because for whatever reason, we forgot our headlamps. We started super early. Then we thought we were going to be done, but like, no, it was like damn near night by the time we were done and couldn't summit the last one because we didn't have headlamps. We had to skip it. So 
that was really defeating to me. Now I'm like always bringing a headlamp, even if I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. I've, I've had very similar experiences uh, just like that. And that is what has prompted me to always bring the 10 essentials. And that's what's prompted me to build a kit so I can just grab and go. And I always have it because I've had experiences just like you described where I, you know, didn't intend for X, Y, Z to happen or I plan to be back by this time. Uh, but that didn't happen. And now I don't have what I need and I can't accomplish this. objective. Yeah. So that's exactly why. So frustrating because you could if you right. had the, the how do you before we get into the next one how do you balance though taking like because some of this stuff kind of you might be doubling up on or something mm -hmm. how do you balance that with trying to maintain a light weight when you're going so the ultra light kit is is so light it literally fits in this tiny pouch Interesting. right it, it's the it is i don't have it on me but it's as big as this first aid kit that's it oh okay Gotcha. So I have the ultralight pouches about this big, and then I have the first aid kit, which is about this big. So okay. those two things. So I can fit both of those things in the trail running pack. And if I'm going on a 10 mile trail run, I don't, I'm probably not going to need anything. Right. I'm probably going to drink some water and I don't need anything in that pack. But those, that kit is so small and so light that I can throw that in a 10 liter trail running pack. And, and to me, that's the purpose of a trail running pack is to carry the 10 essentials. So that's the only thing you would need, ever need to put in there is the 10 essentials. That's like the whole purpose of a, of a race fest. What do you, what do so, you, use, yeah. What are you using for a pouch for that? Um, it kind of, it, it depends if I'm going trail running, it's going to be, um, it's just going to be like a sealed nylon zipper pouch and I just shove everything in there cause it's super lightweight. Okay. Perfect. Uh, but like when I guide, I want something that's going to be more durable cause I'm using it more often. Right. I'm bringing, if I'm not using the, the thing itself, I'm at least bringing it out to show and I'm taking part showing to people. So, um, my, my kind of, uh, my go-to stuff that I use when mountaineering is a little more durable. Like this is a, like a Cordura nylon pouch yeah. for my first aid stuff. So it's pretty durable. Right on. So I'm not, I'm not super, I'm not going ultra light when I'm, when I'm guiding. So I'm not concerned about a few extra ounces here and there. Right on. Perfect. Yeah. So to answer, to, to make sure that I answer your question, um, how do we balance, you know, bringing too much stuff? The, the basics is, is so light and so minimal that I don't even notice that. And I can bring that in addition to, to what I'm bringing elsewhere. Dope. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, now we're into the, the third one is fire. And so that's just going to be like a lighter and matches windproof, you know, stormproof matches. Um, I have like a, an electric USB lighter, which is pretty cool, but it's, it's not very reliable. Every time I go to use it, I find that it's dead. Um, and then I'll charge it up and the next time it'll still be dead. So I tend to like to use that one for maybe like lighting my stove. But I'm not going to rely on it. If I'm going on it, if I'm going I'm to put my, in my trail running kit, I'm going to probably just put like a gas station Bic lighter because it's, it's reliable. Uh, and store matches are also pretty reliable and together they're pretty lightweight. So Perfect. you like those storm proof matches? Mm -hmm. I do. Well. Yeah, they work really well. Good in like the wind and stuff. Mm -hmm. They, you can't blow them out. They're pretty amazing. Okay, sweet. And then, yeah. One tip I had for a lighter that I learned on a on the PCT section hike I did was my lighter got wet, right? And so like I couldn't mm -hmm. flick it, couldn't flick it on. And the guy I was with, he's the 68 year old dude. He's like, no, just put it in your pocket. It'll dry out. I'm like, yeah, right, mm -hmm. dude. I was like, no, it won't. And two hours later, boom, I was able to, I thought it was done. And no, you thought it was done for a good. Yeah, I thought it was done for good. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was ready to roll. Cause I like, oh, yeah. was, like it was like a rainy day. Like it was mm -hmm. like just, and it was outside my pocket for whatever reason. I was mm -hmm. like, no way it's doused, dude. Mm -hmm. And so real interesting kind of tip there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Put in your pocket. All right. Yep. Um, let's see what, what's next health and safety would be the next category. And so that's going to be like your, your first aid kit. Um, and what's in the first aid kit. Let's kind of go over that real quick. So it's going to be like your, your basic band-aids, antiseptic, uh, things like that. This one has got, um, what I put in it is I got some Benadryl, some ibuprofen, and some aspirin, and put them in little Ziploc bags. Um, I've got some blister band-aids, that's a big one. 
these things are specific for blisters and they might have some like they might have some like numbing um fluid in there i think built into it because when you put it on there you can't feel that blister at all <laughs> and it bonds it bonds so well to your skin like a week later you're gonna be taking a shower and it's gonna still be on yeah, your yeah. your heel works really really well um and that's just band-aid brand blister band-aids i also have a tourniquet because that's one of those things this is pretty small lightweight tourniquet that's one of those things where um you can't it's hard to improvise and make a really good tourniquet and that's it's a life-saving thing if you have a tourniquet you can save someone's life and that's something that could happen in a mountaineering um, setting if someone punctures your leg with a crampon or an ice axe we're using a lot of sharp stuff when we're mountaineering so um i would i would advocate for bringing an actual tourniquet if you're gonna if you're gonna bring something um sharp yeah well if you're gonna bring something that's not improvising you know because oh. you can improvise a splint right a broken right. broken bone is not a bone is not a life threatening mm -hmm. injury but um, if somebody is bleeding having an arterial bleed uh that can be a life threatening thing so yeah interesting yeah um and then on that uh, in that category of the health and safety category we're also bringing like a, a plb so like the garmin in reach and that's also where your phone comes back into play so now we have your phone in two categories both the navigation and we got it in the health and safety uh, category um also you know before before everyone had an iphone we didn't have a light a flashlight built into our phone so at least you know as we were talking about the, the illumination part at least everybody now has a flashlight that they yeah. didn't have before in other words, mm -hmm. on the iphone all right so category five that's tools and that's going to be um typically that's just been like a knife and duct tape uh, i would advocate for a a multi-tool that should be your tool because a knife is useful but pliers and a knife is infinitely more useful can't yeah. tell you the number of times that i've used this thing to fix all sorts of things particularly if you're skiing you want the multi-tool mm -hmm. bindings and all that stuff and yeah right, you know, exactly. and screws and all that i know yeah <laughs> you can't you're not just at a resort where you can go ask the lifties hey can i get a whatever <laughs> totally once you get into skiing there's all sorts of things you got to add to it yeah you got to be able to repair a binding or a broken ski or all sorts of stuff so or yeah. a boot a boot malfunction so yeah. yeah um yeah and then the other things in the tool category are going to be like paracord we've got an infinite number of uses uh some duct tape and then i like to bring a ski strap that's hmm. always useful for all sorts of things not just when you're skiing so those are those are the things for the tools and then our shelter so if we're going mountaineering that's going to be like your your tent that's that counts as your shelter so you don't need to bring like an extra item necessarily um it could be a bivy if you're going ultra light it could you could even bring a bivy as a as a backup like if you're going to do a high altitude mountaineering objective and you want to have um, some emergency shelter emergency shelter in case something happens you could bundle somebody up on a big down jacket and stick them in a bivy sack. Uh, but you know, your tent gets you to X, Y, or Z, but then you're going to the summit and you're not bringing your tent because you're leaving it somewhere, but you still want to carry the 10 essentials. So you also have your emergency blanket that's going in your 10 essential bag. Yeah, so that's a, that. that's a perfect example. That, that Kelly Halpin, I don't know if you follow her, but she set the FKT on the wind river high route and she would, she just brought, uh what the heck uh what is it a blanket what is that called the space blanket. yeah uh, yeah space blanket uh -huh. she's like she's like yeah i just brought that as my shelter because i knew because she did some wild route before where that was just her shelter she's like i knew mm -hmm. i could hack it out with it mm -hmm. like, dang dude that's so savage but they work yeah totally they do work um but that the the emergency blanket and shelter is a perfect example of how do you balance when I bring the kit in addition to everything else, or I just bring the kit like that. You just gave an example of a, a situation where you would just bring the kit. And in that situation, that would suffice as both in the insulation category and as the shelter category. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the situation where you would bring both 
is when you're going to go mountaineering and up to that point, you know, you're carrying your tent up to camp. And so that's your shelter. But then once you leave your tent to go to the summit, you don't have your tent anymore. So you no longer have shelter. So then you would have both the emergency blanket and the tent. Yeah. The perfect example. Totally. So, cool. Um, the next category is going to be uh, nutrition. So you're, you're bringing food, but you always want to bring the reason it's on here is you bring more than what you need, bring some extra food. Um, cause you don't know necessarily how long you're going to be out there. Maybe you're, maybe you get stranded out there or you get lost longer than you were expecting. So you have a little bit of extra food to, to cover you in that case. Um, and that's gonna, you know, when you're, when you're packing your gear, it's not just going to be packing food, but it's going to be packing like how you cook that food. So you're going to have a stove, whether that be like, um, and you know, an MSR reactor or very common to see like a jet boil out there. Um, if I'm going super light and I'm doing like fast packing, I'm going to bring very minimal stove. I might not, I might choose not to bring stove at all, but it is nice to have. I might bring something like this, like a really tiny pocket rocket. Yeah. And that would be like the minimalist version in that stove category. Dude, you are, dude, you are crushing this. I love this. What also, by the way, I saw this on the mediocre amateurs. They, you could also use the stove as one of your, at, for fire because they literally just used it as a torch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they mm -hmm. lit the mm -hmm. stove and use it as a torch. They were in the Wind River Range and everything was mm -hmm. wet. It was getting the yeah. monsoon season and they just use yep. it as a torch to start their fire. And I was like, that's so genius. I never thought about that. They're just like holding it, you know, obviously be careful, but you know, yeah. you could totally do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've definitely done that before. I've really? used the stove to start. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because the, the lighter, you know, it's just a small flame, and sometimes you're working with like wet wood, and right. so you got to get something started. And so the stove can work for that. But you can't rely on the stove's igniter to start that fire. So make sure you have a lighter for sure, and right. don't just like think that the stove is going to have you covered. Because those igniters they they break constantly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, kind of why we're on that category. Um, I, I don't bring these in my pack, but they're, I just thought I'd mention them because they're nice to have. You got like the, this jet boil crunch it and you can thread this onto your uh, fuel canisters to punch a hole in them so that it drains just a tiny bit of gas that's in there. And then you can then recycle it. And then, so that's what you do if you're recycling the canister, but also they've got this thing called um, flip fuel and you screw this onto like a larger canister. And it'll allow you to transfer the fuel from the larger canister to the smaller canister. So that way you don't have a bunch of um, half full canisters um, yes. when you're packing. Because you don't want to like waste the tiny bit of fuel that's in there. But you also don't want to bring a fuel canister that only has like a third of it in there. Right. So this solves that problem. Awesome. Cool. Um, the next category is going to be hydration. You know, everyone's used to seeing a regular filter like this MSR filter that takes out absolutely everything. This is like something you want to bring if you're like traveling in South America and you're not really sure about how the water quality. Um, but when you're in North America and especially in the mountains, you don't need that level of protection. So you can use something, you know, like one of these like Sawyer's with this, with a soft bottle. Perfect. That'll work. Especially this is great for trail running because it's so small and so light. Um, or my favorite would be like the, um, the Katadin. This is a Katadin B free. Uh, and what I like about this is that it's got a wider opening. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to fill up with water. And, um, there's other things out there. Like I can take this, uh, this is Camelback water bottle. And then there's also this UV filter. It's kind of like a SteriPen. But instead of like swishing it around in the top of the water bottle, you can just thread this on there. Oh. And then I push this button. Whoa. And then it sets a one minute timer and it just tells me when it's after it's been treated. I just sit there. You can see the little UV light on the bottom. Crazy. That's so nuts. <laughs> That's so crazy. So does that mean that what that does that mean? theoretically water if you were getting water in a standing pool that the water at the top might be cleaner than the water at the bottom because the uv rays has been hitting the top of the water i don't know the answer to that question but hey i'm just 
Dude, that just <laughs> doesn't it? I mean, yeah, getting the UV rays from the sun. I don't know. Seems logical. Yeah, I don't know. You're going to have to ask uh, someone else about that one. <laughs> <laughs> we need a we need to bring a scientist on or something. Some water. Right. Let's get a let's get a scientist on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, sun protection. Sun mm, protection. Oh, I'm bad with this one. This one's fun. This one's fun. Why are you bad with this one? I never want to carry it. I, it's either I never want to carry the sunscreen because it's – I wish people would make a small bottle of sunscreen, like uh -huh. a travel freaking size bottle of sunscreen. I don't understand uh -huh. why they have to be so large all the time. And uh -huh. it's like for whatever reason, I can never – I just don't – I mean, I could probably find one and order one. I just never think of it. The one thing, though, that I will say is – chapstick like spf chapstick is a big deal mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. anytime i go to the mountains i'm always getting real bad sunburn lips and it's these these little it's just these little things i never think about again we're like totally. i know i know i should do it and i just I'm like so caught up with other stuff that i just neglect bringing the stuff that's Whatever. funny actually it's almost like we talked about this one beforehand and you just like perfectly set me up to go over the sunscreen or the sun <laughs> protection category um, <laughs> yeah. Because I just figured out recently uh, my my new system for sunscreen. Um, so this is this is made by Human Gear, and it's called a, a Goo Tube or a Go Tube. I don't remember which. And it's silicone, so it's pretty tiny. Um, it's got a wide opening, so I can easily take a regular full size sunscreen container and I can squirt it in there. Right. It's got the the cap that has the small opening, so you can just squeeze out a little bit of sunscreen. And then the cool thing is it's got this like, if you look at the lid, I'll kind of zoom in. It's got this like retractable mm -hmm. loop and it snaps up on the top of the lid. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it keeps the lid from opening so you won't leak in your mm -hmm. in the top of your pack. So, so this thing is what I would, what I use. And I just take a larger sunscreen and I squirt it into there um, as I need it. Um, now, personally, I have a sunscreen that's going to be for my like, arms and legs and any exposed skin, but then I have a different sunscreen that goes on my face. Interesting. And the reason, yeah, the reason is, is because I'm this, what happens to me is that it, it leaks into my eyes and it stings. I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody else, but for me, it happens all the time. And uh, so I use like a, a way more expensive sunscreen. Like it's way too expensive to put all over my arms and legs and everything. Um, but it's perfect for, for the face. So, that would be like Sol, S O L, and they, they have a, this. Not this one, but they have a high altitude version. Mm -hmm. And this is the stuff you can put on just for mountaineering. You can put it on in the morning right before you go to the summit. And I only need to put it on once the entire day. It'll last the entire day. So it's pretty amazing sunscreen. That's and, 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 yeah. One sec. I think that's my qualms with sunscreen. It's like you have to constantly be putting it on during the day. Mm -hmm. and I just want to put it on once yep, and then leave it. And that's why I kind of like those mineral sunscreens. <laughs> like I gave you that mm -hmm. mineral sunscreen mm -hmm. last yep. time when you were like, I'm going to have this on till next year. <laughs> Cause it was like just caked on your, I like, I literally think like the quintessential mountaineer look or rock climber look is like this yeah. thing of like, they're just like this ghost white just face yeah. because of this, because of the sunscreen all over their face that never rubs in. <laughs> Totally. totally. And, and yeah, I don't really mind that stuff because at least it stays on. You know, yeah. Reapply That's it. funny. That's funny. <laughs> you know, every every time I go to Hawaii and I get a rental car, you, you, the grip of the <laughs> of right next to the door, the, the you know the oh shit grip, uh, it is it is white from mineral sunscreen. You can see it on there because it it never comes off. Right. So I don't I don't like that stuff, but the the soul <laughs> the soul stuff does not does not do that. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's one of the nice things about that. This is the, my favorite stuff. It also doesn't leak in my eyes. Um. But I also like clear. So like the stuff that I put all in my arms. That's just it's clear sunscreen, and so that's uh, and it's one of the only ones that I found that's um a lotion. So you rub it on. It's not a spray on. Mm -hmm. That's also clear. So that's one of the reasons they're like that. And then uh, also another one that I like for my face is uh, called Dermatone. And this can go on your lips and your face. So it's both like a lip balm um, and a face stick. I really like that. Uh, and then in the sunglasses category, 
Um, mountaineering, you're going to be wearing glacier glasses. This is uh, sunglasses category is another perfect example of when I would bring that small pack away kit plus my primary. So my primary is going to be my full on glacier glasses that are category four dark lenses. And they also got um, side shields. So they block out all the light and they're really, really dark. But my backup is going to be this little film canister. And it's got these tiny lenses in there and they're called Rollins. So just this. And so if someone breaks or loses their sunglasses, I can put this on their face <laughs> and then we can use some duct tape. <laughs> and it works dude you know? that's so i remember you telling me about this the other day and i was like dude that's genius man yeah see i said there was a guy i used to follow on the pct did the pct and through the sierra he lost his sunglasses and this mm -hmm. was the high snow year in 19 yep. dude he basically had to he basically took like his neck gaiter put it over his face and kind of cut like small little slits for his eyes and yep. that's like how he navigated for like hundreds of miles. Yep. Yep. Totally. Done that before. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. You can build all kinds of different things, but you see what I mean? Like this is just a, it's, yeah. it's a minimals back of it. It weighs absolutely nothing. It's worth bringing in addition to your glacier oh. classes in case somebody loses Hundreds. their sunglasses. What's yeah. it called again? They're called Rollins. Rollins. So yeah. Yeah, and then you just get, if you get a film canister, they won't quite fit in a regular film canister. So look, I, I think you can get a larger film canister to stick it inside. Uh, but they come just wrapped in cardboard, which is just not not quite good enough. Yeah. Um, there's other things that you can use as well. These things are really cool. So I'm just going to show them anyways, even though it might be a bit excessive for a backup pair. These are called popticles, and they fit in this tiny little box. But then you open them up, and they just like open up like a, it's like a transformer. <laughs> oh yeah. I love it, dude. I love it. It looks like you should put a tap out shirt on you. And right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those are fun. Um, and then they've got these, these other like really tiny foldable sunglasses that fit in this slim case. And then you can fold them out. So there's, there's the point is that there are lots of different options for folding small sunglasses that you can use as a backup. And then in the event of emergency, I would just use duct tape to create a side shield for these sunglasses, block out more light. Love so. it. I love it. That's that's awesome. One thing I would go with that too is I always am a, a fan of making sure, like if you're doing a all day mountaineering objective the next day and you're like sleeping in your car. Just put your sunglasses in your bag right away that night because mm -hmm. you're not going to remember them in the morning. When it's pitch mm -hmm. black, you wake up at 12 a.m. to do this Alpine Summit. The last thing on your mind is like, oh, I need sunglasses. <laughs> yep. Saying 100% right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's the same thing with a headlamp in reverse. If you're going somewhere when you're starting out and it's bright and sunny, you're not thinking about a headlamp. Oh, yeah, so, totally. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. Those are both, those are two good reasons to make a, a kit that's pre-packed that already has everything in it mm -hmm. right there. Um, so for your primary use sunglasses, um, I, I really like Jilbo as uh, the brand. And the reason is because they're one of the only sunglass manufacturers that I've found that uh, they don't discontinue their, their very often, they don't discontinue their uh, models or their brand lenses and so you can always get replacement lenses and you can always get replacement parts so if you like you lose the nose piece or if an arm falls off or if you lose one of the side shields or any of the other parts they keep those in stock and you can always get replacement parts replacement lenses um, they're also obviously a very high quality brand but i love that they always have replacement parts and replacement lenses huge so that's huge. that's my refund yeah because the first thing that happens is you scratch up your lenses all the time if you can't get exactly lenses, that sucks so and you carry the you use the strap on them too uh and not all the time but it is nice to have yeah um, particularly when you're mountaineering because you can just take them off and you can just hang at your neck mm -hmm. which is great cool yeah yeah, there's and there's so many brands out there, and I don't like contributing to the, the whole landfill scenario. So it's great that you can always get replacement parts to keep things going for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I when I guide, you know, I'm doing all everything from ice climbing to mountaineering. So I have um, this is these are my sunglasses. If I if I'm guiding, and they have three glasses in here, 
Um, one of them is a, just a regular pair of sunglasses. One of them is my glacier glasses. And then the other one is a um, clear lens. And that's for like ice climbing, just protect your eyes as you're swinging ice tools. Dang, dude. I love it. Yeah. You can really tell somebody that's an outdoorsman by how many pairs of glass sunglasses they have, right? I mean, it's like, and then you always lose one, but then you find it. But then in the in the process, you buy you bought another one. And it's like, yes, I get into that all the time. Awesome. Yeah, I think uh I think the researchers have actually well, the sunglass industry has done studies and they said that the uh, the number one market for sunglasses is the Pacific Northwest. Because for that reason. People buy sunglasses, lose them, and buy them every year all over again. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm looking at a pair of sunglasses I have right here. I was on the way to Mount Adams, and I was like, dude, I can't find my my sunglasses aren't in here. Mm -hmm. Dang it. So I had to stop, the, grab some. Same with my, my buddy did the same thing. But then all of a sudden, I found my glasses when I got back home, and, and now I have like three pairs. But the Pacific Northwest, especially volcanoes, spring volcano season, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the sunglass season. Yep. Yeah, it's sunglass season. <laughs> All right, what do we got next? All right, so we just covered sun protection. Um, so the next is going to be like your your clothing protection. So uh, wind, rain, and cold protection. So again, that's something where you can bring like minimalist. So your emergency poncho could protect you against rain. But you're not going to pull that out. You, you don't want to pull that out. Let's take a backup if you have nothing else, right? You're going to bring a rain jacket. It's probably going to be a primary. Um, and then, you know, when I'm mountaineering, I'm going to bring, like, my regular, like, Arteryx Pro Shell jacket because it's pretty burly and durable and it's not going to wear out as I have my backpack over the top of it. I'm using it a lot. And uh, it can also be, uh, suffice as my wind protection. Um, but if I'm going super light, um, like, you know, what you described earlier and you had a trail runner where she didn't want to bring a lot of gear, she's probably just going to bring the poncho. Mm -hmm. In this case, I have the poncho and the emergency blanket in the same bag. Um, but maybe I want something a little bit more than that. Arteryx makes this thing called the Norvon SL, and this is a Gore-Tex shell. But it's just the Gore-Tex. There's no nylon fabric um, that the Gore-Tex is laminated to. This is just the Gore-Tex. And it weighs, I think, four ounces. And it's full, permanently waterproof. It's always going to beat up um, because yeah. it's made out of Gore-Tex. That thing is crazy. Those are my favorite waterproof layers is, is yeah. that one. <laughs> That's so cool, dude. <laughs> that thing is so small. <laughs> it's cool. You should... Yeah, check it out. It's pretty cool. It's probably like two hundred bucks. <laughs> um, I think it's three hundred bucks actually. Oh my God. <laughs> no way, dude! It's the size of the palm of his hand. Yeah. Oh. But I mean, an Arteryx jacket—that's how much Arteryx jackets cost. Yeah, yeah. That's actually one of the cheaper ones. So. <laughs> Arteryx. Oh, that the probably is the reason why I don't have any Arteryx gear <laughs> at all. Yeah, it's it's pricey, but it's it's it is the best gear. I think it's the best. Yeah, I really do think it's the best. Yeah, um, Arteryx is one of the best, and I, I, the other one I really really like is Patagonia, and that's because they will repair anything that you have for for life. You oh, tear yeah. a hole in it. Yep, absolutely. Tear a hole in it. The zipper wears out. You bring it to a Patagonia store. They will mail it in a, in a batch with a bunch of other people's broken gear. Uh, they'll send it to their repair facility in Reno. They'll repair it, send it back to the store, and then you go pick it up at the store. So it's really economically friendly from a shipping perspective, and obviously it's economically friendly from a keeping gear out of a landfill perspective. Uh, and so for that reason, I'm a huge fan of Patagonia. Right on. Um, Which brings me to the wind protection layer, and that's um, like I, this is the Patagonia Houdini. There's other things out there made by other brands that are very similar. But this is extremely light, extremely small, about the same as this Arteryx layer. And the nice thing about a wind layer is it really makes a big difference. Like if you're on a trail run and you're just wearing a t-shirt, you can get pretty cold if the wind picks up. And even though this is paper thin, you block if you block the wind, it will make you significantly warmer just by putting on this really thin layer. 
And there's no reason not to bring it because you can fit this in the chest pocket of a trail running vest. Super smooth. What is it that makes it so wind resistant? Like, what is it made out of? I'm looking at it's it just up. it's just nylon. Like same material that you you know that your bivy sack or your tent is made out of. So interesting, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're right. I mean, it does cut down significantly, or it helps the warmth significantly. Mm -hmm. a layer like that. Yeah, it just cuts the chill that you would get on your on the surface of your skin by blocking the wind. It's really remarkable how much right. warmer you'll be when you put on a wind layer. And then, uh, so lastly, in that this is your you know your clothing wind protection category is going to be insulation. And so this is just a, a down jacket packed into its own pocket. A lot of the Patagonia, most of their jackets pack into their own pocket. And um, I, I like to use down for my insulation because it's more compact uh, and it's light and it's not going to lose warmth over time. Whereas synthetic insulation will vent over time. It'll lose its warmth properties because you're compressing that insulation and it just doesn't, it doesn't come back um, yeah. as well as down does down will pretty much always for the life of the jacket stay just as warm. Yeah, and you can just throw it in a, a dryer with some tennis balls to puff it back up. Yep. Absolutely. To. Yep. Great idea. Right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's that's the 10 essentials. Dude, you crush this. Sweet. Glad you <laughs> glad you like it. Glad you learned something. Yeah, you seriously crushed that. I'm trying to think if there is anything that any anything that somebody might ask about that, but you covered it so well that I'm not even sure like where I would go with that. Oh, okay, maybe here. What was that? I had a, I had a note about a first aid, but I don't even remember what I was going to say with it anymore. Yeah, I don't even remember. Is there anything you want to add to any of this? Like, would there? What would be like an eleventh essential? If you, <laughs> an eleventh essential. If you had to name an eleventh mm. essential, what would it be? Mm. headphones a burrito <laughs> a burrito there you go dude <laughs> um, extra cows yeah it's funny you mentioned that i think in my phone i have like 12 essentials listed so let me look let me look this up by the way we're right at 45 minutes right now we just wow dude, that's what happens when you put a you put a time on it we we crushed it that's awesome yeah um well if i look at the if you look at the rei 10 essential system that's navigation we covered that oh you know what they have a altimeter on there but that's also covered by your phone when you're using the gps app your altimeter is on there so that's that's good to know um yeah illumination sun protection that's covered you know, a good thing to add into the sun protection thing, um, which kind of covers your clothing and sun protection, is as a sun hoodie. I really like to have a sun hoodie. Big time promoting those because you don't have to put on as much sunscreen when you're, when you're wearing that, and um, and they still keep you pretty cool, like just like as they would with a t-shirt. Dude, but I gotta say, man, I'm wearing a sun hoodie right now, actually. Surprisingly, as there's no sun around here. But dude, this hood, man. The hood is hot. Like mm -hmm. it looks cool. Like when you're out there, you like you look like a ninja <laughs> backpacker. But dude, you sweat like twice as much. I think. I like. Yeah, I, I, think I, I recently picked up almost. You know how people will put bandanas beneath their underneath their hats and like kind of mm -hmm. a lot of through hikers will do that. I actually picked up this thing that like it has like a string here or like a rubber thing here, and then it actually is like a bandana, but it's actually just. I don't know. It almost looks like a rag, I guess, that just hangs down below your neck. Mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. keeps that. And that's like significantly cooler, I feel <laughs> like. I like the sun hoodies, but it's like, and I like the way I look at them, but they're freaking hot, man. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't like being yeah. Hot. I think it's just because you don't have like the breeze blowing over your skin that makes a big mm -hmm. difference. Um, the kind of the best sun hoodie you could do is just get a white one. It's just mm -hmm. going to not absorb a lot of. Right. A lot of warmth. Yeah. Fire, emergency shelter, extra food, extra water, extra clothes. Yeah. Um, a battery. 
Ooh, an external char- like an external charger charger yeah so i bring like this is pouch it's got all the cords in there it's got a micro usb mini usb usb c and an iphone cord and then like i'll bring an apple watch cord because i'm typically using an apple watch um and then i'll bring a battery i think this can charge my phone like four times yep. but i got a phone i've got a headlamp i've got my personal locator beacon if I'm going rock climbing, sometimes I'll bring my two-way radio. All of those things run on batteries. And then, I mean, especially if I even got this UV filter, this thing runs on batteries as well. So there's so many things that are, we're now bringing that, we're, that are electronic and they rely on batteries. And so you got to bring a power bank. And so that's what I typically do. Um, I've used a lot of different ones. Anchor, I found, is super high quality. I really love this company. Um, they produce a really good product so that's what i that's what i use and then this one has two usb ports because again we got so many different electronics i don't want to be limited to just charging one thing at a time so i got two usb ports clutch clutch dude oh you crush this i think this is going to help a ton of people i i mean like i said i even people that are experienced in the in the woods and things like that i just put down some notes of things that i need to get off of this kit that we were just talking about right there specifically those sunglasses some re- replacement ones i need to get some stormproof matches because i experienced my winter camping last time it was just windy as heck and i was having a heck of a time like mm-hmm. and then i need to get i need to get a better first aid kit for sure mm-hmm. for sure mm-hmm. for sure so definitely looking into all of that dude i i appreciate you is there anything you want to say before we wrap it up uh i just i guess i just kind of want to we've touched on it multiple times throughout this video but i want to make sure that it's clear what you're bringing what you're not bringing like the whole like mini and then large ten essentials thing like what's the kit look like and when do we bring the, the full kit versus not the kit um so that and it's kind of hard. That's that's why I'm reiterating. That's why I'm bringing it back. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, I think in situations where you expect to not need anything, you bring the ultralight kit alone. That's that's it by itself. And it should be it should be two things. It should be ultralight, but we don't want a bunch of crap in there. Everything in there should be ultralight, but it should also be really high quality. So if I showed you my ultralight kit right now, I'd, everything in there it would be pretty high quality stuff. I don't have a compass that's in the top of a water bottle. I can have a real compass, even though it's ultralight. Um, but I have a teeny tiny little flashlight that's a high quality flashlight. It's teeny tiny, but it's high quality. So if I'm going on a trail run and I know I'm not going to need any gear, I'm going to bring the minimalist kit. It's got hardly anything in there. If I'm going mountaineering, I'm bringing what I want to be using. I'm bringing a really high powered headlamp, for instance, I'm bringing a big multi-tool, right? Um, but I'll have that little tiny kit in there as well, because weight is not a, as much of an issue. And that entire kit packs down to the size of a, a baby sack. What would you take? Cause we, we've been talking about doing that three sisters traverse. What would you mm-hmm. take? What would you take for that? For example, so that, that would be a day thing, 25 miles, I think. Mm-hmm. Skiing. But also going uphill, obviously, a lot. Yeah, that's great. That's great to use in act or like a real situation, so we can kind of play with what to use and when to use it. So, yeah, we're, we want to do three peaks, right? So on skis, we're going to be out all day. It's really long. Uh, we got to be really lightweight, right? Uh, and so, what do you bring? Um, so I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring the ultralight kit for that one. And I'm going to add on to that the things that I know we will probably need. So I'm going to add on to that a pair of real glacier glasses because we're going to be on a glacier. I'm going to add on to that a, a real full power headlamp because I know we're going to be we're going to be in the, the dark. I'm going to add on to that a the ultralight kit has just like tablets, right? It's like um, purification tablets. I don't want to use those. And I know we're probably going to need to get water throughout the day. So I'm going to bring one of these Cadden and be free water filters. Um, I'm going to bring a multi-tool because I'm skiing and I'm going to need more than just a pocket knife. 
I'm probably not going to bring a, a full size compass because I'm bringing my phone, right? So I've already got all that. And then I'll bring probably a battery. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to throw in the ultralight kit because I want to be super light, but I'm going to go through every single item and ask myself, am I probably going to use this today? And if so, what do I specifically want to be using, right? Do I want a keychain flashlight or do I want a headlamp, mm -hmm. right? Does that make sense? Dope. I love it. And I'm stoked for that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. I didn't, we were talking about North sister and we'll talk about this afterwards. Anyway, <laughs> that's a great way to put a comma in it. We're going to have another, we're going to have some more segments with mountain guy, Josh coming up again. We'll, we'll figure out what we want. Maybe we'll pull the audience and stuff. We got, yeah. some good, we got some good views on our last video and that was us just talking every which way. So now we're actually a little more targeted in what we're, we're talking about. So we'll see what other people want and yeah, feel free the bottom of this episode, leave a comment of what you guys want to and see for the next segment. Right. Yep. Cool. All right. All see right. you guys.